Hey guys, good morning. So, today's video of what you should look for in a uh, piggyback ECU. So let me get the sort of background out of the way first. There's a lot of people out there who want to shit on piggyback ECUs because they believe they are not a good product, i.e. they cannot tune an engine properly. Personally, I don't understand how someone can say that because there is such a wide variety of lambda sensors, uh, sorry, not lambda sensors, such a wide variety of piggyback ECUs on the market ranging in complexity from super complex to super simplified shit. But I'm just telling you in advance that people out there are saying this okay getting past that but first of all you need to be intercepting the map sensors on the car and the map sensor if the car has got it so the car will have uh, one or two map sensors and specifically I'm talking about turbo cars here for um, for this uh, for this video if you have the turbo on the car or you are thinking about putting the turbo on the car these are the things that you need okay enough disclaimers so you need to have the ability for um, two map sensors and a MAF sensor some factory cars they come with one or two map sensors so if your car has two map sensors then you need to be able to intercept both of those TPS you need to be able to monitor TPS you need to have um, direct control of the injectors for fueling you do not want to be using in my opinion a piggyback ECU that is using the MAF sensor to adjust fueling it was never ideal but you could do it on all the cars I mean on this car at the moment I'm using um, an Apexi AFC Neo which is which adjusts, adjusts the MAF sensor signal and that does a very good job of adjusting the fueling but the MAF sensor is used for many different things by the original car's ECU so adjusting the MAF sensor is also adjusting the timing and um, you don't want to be doing that on a uh, turbo car if you can help it so for inject for fuel control I strongly 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 recommend don't get a piggyback ECU that controls fueling through MAF signal but takes direct control of the injectors themselves and controls fuel that way and then we need uh, lambda control this is the really the key one uh, on the newer cars they'll be monitoring their lambda signal well they're fitted with a wideband lambda sensor from the factory and the car's ECU will be monitoring the signal from that wideband lambda sensor all the time probably even a full throttle so if you can see that the fuel uh, the fuel mixture is not where it should be or where it thinks it should be which could be different to yours this is the whole point of tuning then it's going to detune the, the work that you've done so to get around that you need a, a piggyback ECU that can control the white band lambda sensor signal and then you come to the timing um, there's two schools of thought on the timing you can either manipulate the signal that's coming from the sensors going to the ECU or you can manipulate the signal going from the ECU to the ignition circuit there's pluses and minuses to doing it both ways I think once you look at it, it they all amount to the same thing um, and that is it guys basically this is what you need to look for in a um, feedback ECU oh also let me ask sorry it's not let me add some more things data logging is also a very nice thing to have if you've got an OBD uh, if your car is what 2000 2001 and after you may be able to get away without data logging on the piggyback ECU but to know that you need to work out all the things that you can read uh, from your OBD uh, port and also work out what resolution you're going to be logging at someone's come down here over the night and taken all this out it wasn't like this yesterday 
anyway, and depending on the different car manufacturers, they don't all give the same information. But check the resolution as you start to monitor more and more things through the OBD. The frequency with which the values update becomes slower. So if you're monitoring a lot of things and the update rate is down to a second, then that's probably not going to be enough, fine enough resolution for you to do a tune with. Also, another nice, nice thing, and probably an essential thing, is to be able to download the software that controls the piggyback ECU from the manufacturer's website. Because when you have the uh, when you have the manufacturer's software in front of you, it'll become very apparent what facilities, what uh, functions the piggyback ECU has. So basically, you, with the software loaded up on the computer, you can check if it's got all the things I'm saying that a piggyback ECU needs. The lock signal will also be very, very useful. Very nice to have fail safes on the on the ECU. So if exhaust gas temperature gets too high, oil pressure gets too low, oil temperature gets too high, ECU will switch to a more conservative map. So that's the video guys, if you like the video please vote on it, if you've got your own uh, ideas and you know how you chose a piggyback ECU feel free to leave them in the video comments below, I'm, I, I try to keep an eye on the comments but sometimes YouTube doesn't, uh, doesn't inform me of all the comments but I'll try and get back to you, vote on the video like I said, uh, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you again next time.